Hey there, my dear friends. I hope y'all are doing good today. I want to share this with you today. I've been hearing from people, and I'm so encouraged that the Lord is, and it makes sense because it's the same Spirit. It's the same Spirit working in the heart of the believer. So it makes sense that we would be hearing along the lines the same thing. And it has to do with loving others. Y'all, this one I'm talking about, and I know I sound like a broken record. This isn't some wishy-washy, new age kind of stuff I'm talking about. Please don't get that confused and think that's what I'm saying. I've done a lot of studying into the new age, listened to it, um, been challenged. It caused me to dig into the scriptures more of the things I've heard and witnessed about this new age stuff, y'all. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like, you know, because I, I can hear it now in my mind, somebody might say, when I talk about loving others, how it's the highest goal. It is. It's the highest command. But it might not be what everybody thinks it is. So I'm not, you know, I might hear somebody say, well, yeah, but love is to speak the truth to somebody and tell them and all this kind of stuff. And I do agree. At the right time and the right place, as the Spirit leads us. But let me just get into this, what I want to share today. I hope it'll be quick, but I'm not going to rush myself. Um, so I hope anybody could listen through. Please share what you're learning. Share with us. It's so helpful. All right, so my first probably four or five years of walking with the Lord, getting to know Him, spending time in His Word, building the relationship, I didn't realize this was happening to me, y'all, but it was, and I only know it by the Lord showing me. So I cannot now turn and judge anyone that I might think is doing this because it's the same way I was going. Only by the Lord's grace and mercy and goodness did he change the way I think about this, what I'm going to tell you. But those first few years, y'all, spending time with the Lord, that was my favorite thing to do. I, I didn't mind forsaking everything in this world. And I did find myself becoming more and more isolated, preferring to be alone. And I'm not saying anything bad about that, because I still prefer to be alone and just spend time with the Lord many times. But here, here's what happened a little bit. You see, as we are growing and maturing in the Lord, we're seeing our very nature be changed. We are not who we used to be. We have to be careful. At least, at least this is what the Lord had to wake me up on. Is that... If you start seeing sweat dripping, it's just because I got the windows up, so it won't be so loud for y'all. But anyway, is that look. Remember, knowledge puffs up. And we've been studying scripture and really digging in. And we have to be careful because knowledge can puff us up to think. Or we see ourselves growing in the Lord and we don't do so many of the things we used to do. It can be very easy for us to like be exalted not trying to but we have to be careful because then we're looking down on people around us we're noticing all their flaws we're seeing all the things they're doing wrong and what the lord had to do with me is through circumstances and situations and things happening he had to take me down a few notches because it's down here, way down here, in lowliness of mind and humility that we will be in a place 
to love others, to serve others. Know what I mean? And like I said, that's what the Lord did with me. And um, I'm thankful. And that is when he really started beginning to show me this and teach, started teaching me this. And I'm still so immature in it, y'all, about what it means to be going on that the greatest command be fulfilled in us, which is to love others. That was very long way of saying that, but let me get into these scriptures, okay? So, but you know, I was doing that because I just love the Lord, just like you do, right? We love Him so much. We're so thankful for the things He has done for us, rescued us, set us free. He's so full of grace and mercy. He's so faithful to forgive when we confess. He's all these wonderful good things, y'all, isn't He? And I wanted to praise him. I wanted to do the. I wanted in whatever way. And I would say, Lord, how do I even express this thanks and gratitude that I have in my heart? How do I do that? Because every cattle on a hill is his. Everything was created through him, for him, in him. He owns everything. What could I actually give to him to show my love and my devotion and my thanks? And this is where that greatest command comes in. Because how we now love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength is by serving others. That's what he's showing me. Okay, let's look at a couple scriptures here and be reminded about this because I know y'all have read about it. Um, and, all right, so, well, let me just get to this. John twenty one sixteen. Do y'all remember the Lord saying, do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, yes, I'm, I'm paraphrasing y'all. Y'all know these scriptures. You can go read them in context if you'd like. Please don't be offended if I just kind of try to get to the point with this. But he said, yes, I love you, Lord. And he went on and he asked him again, yes. And Peter was just kind of getting frustrated about it. You know I do. What did the Lord say? He said, if you love me, Peter... Go and feed my sheep. Didn't he? Go and love others. Go and care for them. Mark 10, 45, we saw that Jesus didn't come to this world to be served. He came to serve. And he has prepared the way for us. And he wants to teach us. And that is what he's doing with me right now. How about y'all? Training us. You know, helping us overcome these things within us like holding grudges or being quickly offended with people or insulted with people easily. Can't get over our anger. Um, he's been teaching us how to quit slandering people and gossiping them. He's been teaching us how to rather than try to worry about that splinter in that person's eye. Look at your own heart, Misty. Judge yourself rightly. So, why has he been doing this for us? So that we can just be some holy, righteous, exalted person? No. It's so that we can now go and do unto others as he has done unto us. For example, uh, what is this scripture? Luke 10, 37, he said, As I have done for you, now go and do likewise. 2 Corinthians 1, 4, The Lord comforts us in all our troubles. Why? So that we can go and comfort others with the same comfort we have been for, have been given. 
You know, when we mess up, fall down, do something wrong, go to the Lord, He receive, we receive that forgiveness. Well, I guarantee there's somebody that's attached to us in our life, close by, that we interact with, that's going to mess up, fail us, maybe do us wrong, that now we're going to turn and show them that same forgiveness that we have received from the Lord. You know, um, all this kind of stuff. I'm pouring the sweat now. I don't want to hold y'all too long. But I hope I can make as clear as it needs to be. Um, First Peter in chapter 5, we're told, Care for, serve, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Watch over them willingly, not grudgingly. Uh, you know, he said, but be examples unto them. And y'all, the Lord has brought people into our lives. You are connected with people in your life that I am not. I'm connected with people that you might not ever know or meet. The Lord like Jesus said, those that the Father has given unto me will come to me. The Lord has placed people in our lives for us to begin to do this, to learn, to practice, and to show our love for Him by serving these people. You know, and it doesn't have to be some lightning falling from heaven and all this wild stuff, y'all. The mother that's cradling that newborn in her home by herself can serve those people that are in her life with her prayers and her request and her listening ear to those who have a burden and a trouble and she listens and she gets off the phone and she goes to the Lord and sometimes she's so overwhelmed with grief and burden for them she says Lord I don't know how to pray but the Spirit does that woman is serving those people, caring for them, not turning a deaf ear to what she hears going on around her, not turning a blind eye to those she sees in need, to that poor man that was beat up on the side of the road, left for dead. Y'all and all those people passed him by. Let us not be like that. Let us pay attention and give regard to those that the Lord is connected to our lives for a reason. Nothing by chance, nothing by coincidence. When we are walking with the Lord, everything has a purpose. So, let's see if I got another scripture I wanted to share. You know, too, and this kind of goes along with it. I thought about it. You remember when the Lord said, I think he was posing some questions to somebody, and he said, Who do you think... Oh, I can't remember how it went, but I'm sure y'all know about it. But he said, basically, the one who has been forgiven much will love much. Because you can sympathize with these people and their weaknesses. You've been where they are. You can feel that pain that they're going through. You know, Jesus was a high priest for the people interceding. And he came into the likeness of human flesh, feeling all their temptations, feeling all their weaknesses, bearing their burdens, bearing their sin, their grief, their shame. He felt it and he knew it and he interceded for the people. He loved them much. And in the same way, that's what we have to do. Um, you remember? Decreasing, less and less of us, less and less about what we're interested in and our purpose in life and all this stuff. Yeah, our purpose is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is our purpose. That is, let love be your highest aim. That is our goal. All the rest will be fulfilled. Seek first the kingdom of God and all 
and his righteousness and all this other will be added into you. Remember, he will give us everything we need to live this godly life. And I believe it's for whatever we need to serve our fellow man. Whatever we need to help that downcast in spirit, poor in spirit, little faith. Lord, teach us and help us how to serve. Because we love you and we want to show you. And we do that by caring for the flock that you have placed us among. And two, there's another scripture here I wanted to share. That's, it's in Ezekiel 34, 31. That says, um, the Lord is speaking. He said, you, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men. And I am your God. The flock. And we don't have to go looking for people either, y'all. The Lord already has put people in our lives. We have to learn how to be faithful with the little and the few He's given us so that we will be faithful with much and more that way. That's just not talking about like money and stuff. Be faithful with those few people that the Lord has placed in your life. And he will add unto it more that you might be an example to, more that you might serve in love. You know, learning all the while, being corrected, being changed in our thinking, uh, messing up, falling down, receiving grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that we keep on enduring in service to others. That's how we're showing our love for the Lord. And, but anyway, those that are connected to our lives, though, it'd be a lot easier to go serve and love and listen to and encourage a stranger on the internet that we've never met, wouldn't it? Than it would be to serve my husband or give my husband when he does wrong. And things like that. You know. So I just pray the Lord to help us. And continue to teach us. He's training us. Y'all. Our salvation is nearer. Than when we first believed. Because either the Lord's coming for us. Or we're going to pass on out of this world. You know. Time has passed since we first believed. So our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. And let us endure and, and not faint so that we will reap a harvest in the due time. We will, y'all. And the harvest is great. We need the laborers, the servants, to go out for the harvest of God. And we do it by serving. In whichever way, you know, a need comes to us. It could just be to pray. It could just be to sit with them in their pain. It could be to help them feel accepted and loved right where they're at. That's how the Lord drew me, is by accepting me exactly as I was. You know, not with shame, condemnation, you know, any of these things. He took me under his wing, just as broken and down and out and full of wrongdoing and motives and intentions that had nothing to do with him. And he walked with me. And just being in his presence, y'all, changed me. And these people, just being in our presence will change them. You remember when it talked about Paul, Peter, and all of them? That shadow passed by them. They were healed. So, I pray this would help or encourage anybody to think about. Um, along with me, Lord, please teach us. You know, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to serve, Lord. Teach us how to serve. You're the greatest example. You are the greatest example of a servant. And what real love is, help us to be more like you, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I love y'all.